Hi and welcome to the channel. Normally there would be a full size 737 cockpit here. However, it's currently in pieces. The reason for that is that I'm upgrading the simulator with two of motion, pitch and roll. So far, the project has including cutting steel, welding steel, grinding steel, and some more steel fabrication. Now all parts are finished and I'm finally ready to start the build process. And by the end of this video, the goal is to have the simulator base moving. So what do we need to start the build? We have the main frame to which everything will be mounted. We have the wheels for the frame, making it movable. We have uh, the simulator base. Then we have the main universal joint on which the base will pivot. Then there are some beefy actuators that will move the base. Then we have the actuator mounts that will attach to the frame. And last we have the actuator mounting frame which will attach to the base. With that out of the way we are ready to start assembly. The wheels are first, however I also need to add the actuator mounts in the same operation. Everything fits and I'm happy with how it looks. Then it's the rest of the wheels. With all the wheels attached, the, the frame is easy to move. I guess this will change when all the mass is resting on the frame. Hopefully it will still be movable. Here I'm adding the cross bearing for the actuator mount. Next step is the main universal joint. As the bearing will only see compression loads, uh, I have designed a, a split U-joint, so it's easier to assemble. With the wheels and joints installed, uh, we are ready to add the simulator base. After lining it up and doing some control measurements, the main universal joint is fixed by screws to the base which turned out to be an uh, awkward job. Next step is the actuator mounting frame, which attaches to the base. Before uh, mounting the actuators, I had to install some electromechanical brakes that lock the actuators if there is a power outage. The unlock when fed 24 volts and lock when unpowered. Then it's time to mount the actuators to the frame and base. And the actuators is made using a 700 watt uh, 3000 rpm servo motor. Uh, which rotates a ball screw mounted to a hollow shaft which uh, lifts the base. The total travel is uh, 300 millimeters. Uh, the maximum uh, linear speed is 250 millimeters per second. And the uh, maximum acceleration is 49 meters per second squared. This is not going to throw the sim around, but hopefully it's enough for a tube liner simulator. Uh, 
After mounting the actuators, I noticed a lack of torsional rigidity in the main universal joint. I guess this is a consequence of you using uh, 3D printed joints. This needs to be fixed. However, that is a problem for future me. Let's get to testing the actuators. First step is to power up the servo drives and the servo controller. When everything is powered up, the servo controller uh, zeroes the actuators by moving them to the end stops and then to the parking position. Here is my first ride on the base, slightly skeptical of my own design and work. I always find it kind of nerve wracking when assembling and testing these types of projects. There is always a chance of having made detrimental errors in my back of the envelope calculations. Fortunately, so far so good. If we gloss over the lack of torsional rigidity in the main universal joint. The next step is to connect the servo controller to SimTools uh, version 3, which is responsible for sending the motion data. Here I'm checking that there are no collisions uh, when moving the base to the extreme positions. The range of motion is plus minus 6 degrees in pitch and plus minus 11 degrees in roll. Still, everything looks good. Finally, testing the motion system with Microsoft Flight Simulator with a less than ideal seating position. This initial setup is only replicating the roll and pitch of the aircraft, which is not how the finished setup will work. However, it's easy to implement and does not require any tuning, making it ideal for initial testing. I did get a hint of motion sickness, so I guess the motion system is approved. The next step is to create a basic tune for the motion system, then start with the reassembly of the whole cockpit, and of course see if it is possible to improve the torsional rigidity of the main un universal joint. However, this has to wait until the next video. Thanks for watching.